Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in the near future following a major recession, with a frantic news broadcast, about a young girl being brought back to mainland Japan, after she wins the Battle Royale, a contest that pits students against each other, in a fight to the death on a remote island. While being videotaped, the girl smiles. Shuya Nanahara, a student was traumatized by his mother's leaving and by his father's death. He rarely attends school because of his personal issues. Noriko, his friend arrives at class, and discovers that she is the only one there. Their teacher, Kitano has been distressed lately due to the student's bad behaviors. When he leaves the class, a student stabs him in the leg just for fun. After Kitano recovers from his injury, he resigns from his post and turns back to the students. One year after the instance, Shuya and Noriko are in high school. Their class 3B is going on a field trip. For the first half of the journey, everything goes perfectly fine. Shuya awakens a few hours later, to find all of his friends sleeping. The bus driver and conductor are both wearing gas masks. When they see he is awake, the conductor knocks him out. After some time, Shuya and his classmates wake up in a dark classroom, with metal collars on their necks. Later, the whole class watches as a helicopter lands on the abandoned school, with dozens of soldiers waiting. Kitano, their former teacher exits the helicopter, and walks inside the classroom. Kitano explains that the BR Act, which was passed after 800,000 students walked out of class, is the reason why the class has been chosen to take part in this year's battle royale. Seeing the class in disbelief, Kitano presents the body of their teacher, who pleaded for their students to be released. The students scream in fear. Kitano plays the introduction video, cheerfully instructing the class to kill each other for three days, until only one student remains. Students who don't follow their instructions will go into one of the daily randomly chosen death zones, and are supposed to die when the collar goes off. One of the 42 students, Fumio Fujiyoshi interrupts the film by whispering to her friends. Kitano then stabs and kills her on the spot. The student panics and finally realizes the severity of the situation. They watch the video attentively after that. They discover that they are trapped on a deserted island with no way to escape. A student would hand over a bag full of materials, that they would have to use for their protection to attack the others. The collar around their neck has a tracking device, along with a microphone. If they try to escape or do anything against the rules, it will explode. One of the students is in a state of terror, and won't watch the video. Due to the disturbance, Kitano hits a button that set off an explosion, and kills the student. If more than one student is left, by the end of the three days, all their collars will explode, leaving no winner. Death, like their friend, scares everyone and encourages them to play. Later, the soldiers bring them a supply bag that contains food and water, an island map, a compass, a flashlight, and a random weapon. One by one, the students are called and given a bag before leaving the building. Shogo and Kiriyama are also given a random bag, but Shogo requests he obtain a new one, because it is too light. After killing those they are close to, the two of them are willing to kill anyone to win. Shuya finally gets his head in the game, and rushes out with his bag. Meanwhile Noriko also comes outside, and a guy with a crossbow attacks them. They leave him to fight another guy from their class while they escape. After that, they find themselves in a cave, where Shuya treats Noriko's badly injured arm. Unfortunately for them, they have weapons in their bag, pot covers. In another place, Kiriyama is surrounded by students, who are trying to intimidate him. But a guy makes the mistake of approaching Kiriyama with a gun. In an instant, he gets hold of the gun and manages to defeat the entire group without breaking a sweat. Then he snatches their weapons, and proceeds to attack the others. Sakura throws her bag into the water at the cliff's edge, because she doesn't want to be involved in the game. Kazuhiko, a friend of hers regrets the helplessness of their situation. To escape the horror, they hug each other before jumping from the cliff. A girl's name Mitsuko turned into a cold-blooded murderer. She kills her best friend and doesn't feel even a hint of sympathy for her. The next day, Shuya and Noriko run across a friend, who brandishes an axe and rushes at them. Shuya makes Noriko run away before fighting the guy himself. The pot cover comes in handy to dodge the attacks, but they soon fall down the hill. The man uses an axe to beat himself in the head while doing this. Shuya regretfully watches him, despite the fact that all he did was protect himself. After that, he and Noriko run away again. This time they were stopped by a scared guy with a gun. Taking the opportunity, Shogo shoots the guy dead and takes his gun. After noticing Shuya and Noriko are not attempting to harm anyone, he decides to take them in for additional security. 
They then notice two girls calling for help. They want everyone to work with them to solve the problem. Shogo stops Shuya from going to help because he thinks someone else may have heard them. Therefore, the area is not secure. He proves right when Kiriyama appears, and kills the girls by showering them with bullets. For the last shot, he put a horn in their mouth so everyone would hear the scream and know to run. After a while, Mitsuko goes inside a small warehouse to take a nap, but she discovers a girl there. She points her gun at Mitsuko, knowing that she is not one of the good ones. For her life, Mitsuko falls to her knees. She mocks her subtly, though, and then kills her. In the meantime, a group of students fixed a laptop. They plan to hack the collar and escape the island together. At night, Shogo, Shuya, and Noriko stay at a tiny warehouse. Shogo reveals that when he played before, he was with his friend. The two were the only survivors, but one of them had to die for the other to survive. His friend pretends to betray him, and shoots his leg, so Shogo could kill her. Her plan succeeds, but Shogo has never regretted anything more in his life. He resolves to play again and find a way to escape when she dies for him. Suddenly, gunshots are heard from outside. Kiriyama is after a guy who wears a bulletproof jacket. He resorts to a sword, since he cannot take the opponent down with gunfire. After decapitating the poor man, he hears a noise from inside the house that the trio is in. He inserts a grenade into his mouth, and launches it into the house. Thankfully, the group escaped moments before the explosion. To divert him, Shuya goes outside, but is trapped in the process. When Kiriyama runs out of ammunition, he has the opportunity to escape. Just in time to avoid the attacks, he dives into the sea. The next morning, Shuya wakes up in a lighthouse while Itsumi takes care of him. She and her friends ask him to stay with them, until they rejoin the rest of the group. Staying together could increase their chances of escape. One girl from the group was the friend of the guy, who died with an axe on his head while fighting Shuya yesterday. To take her revenge, she slips poison into the dish that is about to be served to Shuya. Her scheme, however fails, when a girl consumes the meal before she stops. The poison's effects become apparent quickly, and she dies after vomiting blood. The girls get terrified, and begin accusing each other of poisoning the meal. A girl gets her hand on the gun and kills all of them, except for the girl who poisoned the food. Shuya knocks on the door, after hearing gunshots. The girl receives him, who apologizes to him and runs to the top of the tower. Shuya goes inside and is distraught to see all his friends dead. He runs after the surviving girl, only to see that she has also committed suicide. By jumping from the deck of the lighthouse. When Shuya sees Noriko and Kawada again, they decide to search for Mamura's group. In a small warehouse, Sugimura tracks down Kotohiki, who panics and kills him shortly after, Sugimura professes his love before dying. Mitsuko finds and kills Kotohiki after he cries in sorrow. Watching from the rafters, Kiriyama then fires and kills Mitsuko. She sadly dispenses some fitting advice to her two dead classmates. Except for the psychotic Kiriyama, all of the seven students left are either planning or willing to utterly undermine the operations, following the murders of Sugimura Kotohiki and Soma. Mimura Ijima and Yutaka form a hacking organization, that successfully infiltrates the military's computer system, and plans to destroy the perimeter using a vehicle turned into a fire bomb. However, they are discovered at the last second by Kiriyama, who kills them all except one, who manages to detonate the vehicle, badly wounding the murderer. Kaoata confronts and kills the shrapnel-blinded Uzi-armed Kiriyama, with his SPA's 12 shotgun as he Noriko and Shuya arrive at the hacker's burning base. Kaoata, aware of the collars and built microphones, pulls Shuya and Noriko aside on a penultimate day, and fakes their deaths. Kitano finishes the game and dismisses the troops, before establishing final protocol, suspecting that Kaoata has won by manipulation of the BR system, and intending to personally kill the young man. Kitano understands that Kaoata, not Mamura, has been hacking into the game's intranet system for months, and has deactivated Shuya and Noriko's tracking devices. Kitano displays the handcrafted artwork of the deceased students, naming Noriko as the winner. He admits that after being rejected by his daughter Shiori, he was unable to handle the mutual animosity between him and his student. He also admits that he has always thought of Noriko as his daughter. He asks the confused hesitant Noriko to murder him, but is immediately shot by Shuya, after threatening her with a revolver. Kitano fires as he tumbles, revealing the weapon in his hand to be a simple water gun. Kitano's phone rings, and he sits down to answer his phone and says to Shiori, if you hate someone, you take the consequences, before ultimately passing away. 
Shuya Noriko and Kawada board a boat to depart the island, but Kawada passes away from wounds during the final shootout he had with Kiriyama. After some time, Shuya and Noriko are running in the direction of Shibuya Railway Station in Tokyo. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.